<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Welcome to SDL2 on Xcode tutorial series. In this tutorial project, we're going to build the classical snake game on Xcode using C and SDL2. Um, you can see that here, we are going to use the stack libraries instead of the uh, framework for SDL2. Now, first of all, we are going to show you how to build the SDL2 static libraries. I have another uh, small project called SDL2 Lit that is available on GitHub. You can find the link to this small project in the video description below. We are going to use this uh, small project to help us to build the static libraries. In order to use it, you have to install some required packages first. Why install these packages using Homebrew? And in order to use that, you have to install Homebrew first. After you install Homebrew, you will install uh, the autoconfig, automake, and libtools packages. After we finish that, uh, in order to build the static libraries, it's quite simple. We are going to uh, navigate, say, um, I think I put in the document and SDL to lib. We we were going to navigate to the SDL to lib project directory and then type in make and make install. We just need to hit enter and that will help us to build the static libraries. You can see that I have already built this before, so uh, I don't need to rebuild the whole static libraries uh, once again. After you build this, you should find a folder called SDL2 here in the uh, project directory. And within that, you will find the include folder that will include all the header files that we need for SDL here. And then there's a lib folders that include all the static libraries we need. You can see we have the SDL2 libraries. We have its extension GFX for drawing geometry plane motifs. We have uh, the image extension to handle different image uh, formats, for example, PNG and JPG. We have the extension mixer to load audio resources and play audio. And finally, we have the TTF extension to manipulate true type forms. All other libraries are the dependency for the SDL2 libraries. Next. Let me show you how we can include this uh, SDL2 in our uh, Xcode project. In order to do so, we are going to create a new project. Let me go to new and then project here. In the template screen, we are going to click Mac OX and then click the app and click next. In this screen, we are going to fill in our product name. We Let's call it this uh, test project as test. And then in the interface, we're going to choose the uh, storyboard. And um, for the language, we choose object C. It turns out that it doesn't matter what, which kind of option we choose here, because we're going to use C anyway. But I figured out that these three combinations would be the easiest one to deal with. Let's click Next, and then Create. Once uh, the, our project is successfully created, you will find all these files here. But these files are not needed because they are for object C. So I'm going to choose all these unnecessary files and then delete all of them. And I will move to trash. Since we deleted something we don't want, we are going to go to the info playlist and then delete, adjust the items. For example, we are not going to need this one anymore, uh, not this one either. So we delete the, these two items. In the meantime, we are not going to include a new item called high resolution capable. Without this one, our SDL2 window will look quite blurry. So we are going to in include this. Now we are ready to add our SDL2 static libraries. Click this test folder here. And then we are going to right click it and choose F files to test. And we are going to navigate to our SDL2 lib project. And here is our product. We are going to click this SDL2 folder and then check the copy items if needed. And make sure that you will 
check the target uh, here and then we click add and that will add the SDL2 to our project if we go to the uh, click this test again the blue icon here and go to the build phrases you will see here in the link binary with libraries you can see all the static libraries in, are included here but that is not enough for us to use this library because when we build these static libraries we link them against some system framework then in order to use them correctly we need to include all these system frameworks in here as well if you open the readme once again here at the bottom there was a list of missing frameworks here we need to put all of these into this section here in order to add them let me show you how so for example the first one is the application services framework we click the add button here and type in application so we don't need to type in all of them then we can have uh, a selection here for for the application services already we check this one we clicked it and then uh, click add and that will add the application services framework in our project we need to do the same thing for all the rest frameworks here I'm not going to do it one by one but you have to do it in order to use SDL2 now let's go to a, a project that I have already made before the snake project let me open the snake project that we are going to use in this tutorial uh, it is called snake if you go to the uh, click the blue icon here and then go to the build phrases you can see that I have added all the missing frameworks already in the meantime I also add uh, a C library libc.tbd because we are going to use C language in this project it, it is a good idea to include the C library as well now with all these libraries set up we are ready to use the SDL2 static libraries and um, in order to use the uh, SDL2 usually we're going to do the following we're going to initialize the SDL2 libraries and then create the SDL2 window and renderer and then we create an event loop to handle events update the game and then do the rendering since these steps are so common I'm going to make it into some something called engine and that is why we have a folder here called WT engine now the WT here is actually a prefix it is because uh, in C there's no namespace so it is a common practice to choose some prefix for your uh, library in this case I choose WT as our prefix in here um, for, for this first episode we are going to look at uh, four files or two header files in the utilities header we have some lodging utilities you can see that here we set the uh, log level lodging level and there are four lodging functions in different priority the debug the, the debug message use this function for example the info one the wrong message and also the error message if you look at the implementation they are quite simple first of all to set the level you just use the SDL log set priority and in this uh, set of logging functions I'm going to log to the uh, application category so you can see I use the log category application everywhere now um, in order to log the message I'm going to wrap our log function around the SDL log message v function basically I just use a different uh, priority in the corresponding logging function and that's it now let's go to the uh, core of this tutorial we are going to build something called the engine and within which we are going to initialize all the SDL2 libraries and create windows and renderer and etc in order to do so we have a function called the engine init and this will take in a configuration file then then initialize our engine according to the configuration 
you can see it here that the configuration is a structure that has a lot of fields here. You, you need to specify a title for the um, engine. This will show in our uh, window title, window width and height. And here there are some flags for the library, for SDL, for the image extension, mixer extension. And these four fields here is for us to open the audio. We are going to see when we are going to use these four fields later. And the remaining two flags is for us to create window and also renderer. Since there are many fields here, and, and would be, it would be tedious to fill out all these fields ourselves. So I'm going to provide another function called engine configuration set defaults to set the defaults values for um, this configuration. Now let's go, before I go to the implementation, I, let me mention that there is also a function called engine clear that will clean up the memory claimed by the SDL2 engine. This function will be called at the end of our program. And there are also some getters. So for example, get the window, get the window width and height, and also get the renderer. We're going to add more functionality to this uh, engine later on. Now let's go to the implementation and see what kind of default values for this configuration and how we initialize the engine. Now um, you can see that here our default title for the window is window and the default height and width is set to 300. Here is some default flags for the SDL2 libraries and its extension. And this is one is uh, the default values for uh, the uh, function call mix open audio that we are going to use later. And that is the flag for window and renderer. Now, um, here there was a um, private, stat uh, private structure here that is only available in this C file. We are not going to expose this structure to other uh, to outside, and uh, it will have. So we have a one single engine that has the title, with height and the window and renderer. We will going to add more uh, members to this structure later on. But now let's see how we are going to initialize our engine here. You can see that first of all, we will um, initialize our engine using the uh, configuration. We are going to set, say, um, the configuration flag to at least containing the video and audio. And then we'll set the engine title, width, and height and initialize the window and renderer to now because we have not yet get a window and a renderer yet. Now, the first thing you need to do is to call SDL init in order to initialize the SDL2 libraries. That is the very first thing you need to do. And then if it fail, then I need to do some uh, error logging and then return false. If yes, I will get a debug message saying that the uh, SDL2 init is OK. We're going to do the same thing for other stuff. For example, we're going to in, uh, initialize the image. And um, if we go back to the default values for the image flag, it will be 0. That means we're going to, we're not going to support any other formats. And if you do want to uh, support, say, PNG, you need to change this flag to, say, uh, PNG, something like that. We are going to see how we set this configuration flag later. And uh, if if it is not initialized correctly, we are going to plan out the error and then return false. The same for the uh, the tour form, tour time form, and then it it is a little bit more complicated to initialize the mixer library. First of all, we are going to do this. Um, initialization here to support some other formats first and then we have to open the audio so that we can play audio and that is the reason why we need these four fields here. Usually you don't need to change the default values and if there's anything, anything uh, wrong going on you will lock the error and then return false. After that I am going to uh, Lock, lock some debug message and see what kind of 
uh, music decoder and also audio decoder we support using that. We don't need to worry about too much of it now. And then after we successfully initialize SDL2 and its extension, we're going to build the window and the renderer. To create the window, we are going to use the SDL uh, create window function. We put in the title and the uh, XY position. For that, uh, we don't care about this, so we just set it to be SDL uh, window undefined. So you can see that this is the X and Y. And for the next two is the width and height. So we put in the width and height for the uh, from the configuration for our window. And finally, there was a window flag. There was a flag here that is from our configuration as well. So if we cannot create our window, we will uh, lock the message and then return false. And after we get the window, we need to get the size of the uh, window. If, even though we put in our, our uh, width and height here, but the creative window might have di different width and height. This is especially true when you develop your game using uh, for the iOS. So that's the reason why I am going to use this SDL uh, get window size function to get the correct window width and window height. Now, once we get create the um, window, we need to get the renderer to render stuff on the screen. We will use the SDL create a renderer function, put in our window, and then uh, negative one means that we are going to uh, get the first available de uh, drive uh, device. And then we have the renderer flag from our configuration here as our last parameter. And uh, finally, there's some uh, checking as well, that if there is anything wrong going on, then it will return false. After that, uh, that will be the end of our initialization process. If we return true, then we have our um, project ready to use the SDL function and also the extension libraries. In the uh, opposite side, we need to unload all this memory that claimed by the SDL and its extension library at the end of our game. So that's the reason why we need this function. That would be called at the end of our game. You can see that it will destroy the renderer, destroy the window, and also uh, quit the extension library. It seems that I opened the I opened the audio here, and I should close it also. So I will close the audio here, and that will be a cleanup. And uh, here are some getter functions that will return the uh, window window width, height, and also the renderer. That's the um, getter to access the members in this private structure. Now, let's see how, I, how we are going to use this engine. We're going to go to the main C file, and you can see that I include the um, WT engine header files. And then um, here, we create our configuration file and set it to to be our default com configuration. And then we'll initialize our um, engine and then create an event loop here. And let's see what kind of uh, result we can get from this piece of code. Give it a moment. Now we should have our window in a moment. Right, here we go. So now you can see that, uh, as we said, the default window title is window. That's the reason why we have that. And the width and height are set to be 300. So you have that uh, little square window here. And here, this window does nothing but uh, respond to the quit command. And that is the reason. The reason for that is we handle only the quit event here. And there's no update, and for the render part, we only uh, clear the render to be black. You can see that here we have RG, uh, RGB to be 000, meaning 
black color and that is the reason why you see a black window here now let's try to do some changing for example let me change the window uh, title to snake to do so we just click in um, title to be snake and if I would like to change also the width let me take the width to be 660 uh, and also our height to be 360 if you run the uh, program again you should have a different title and also different width and height here we have you can see that the uh, snake window now has the title to be snake which is uh, good and then we have the width to be 660 and the height to be 360 I chose this dimension because uh, we will make it easier for us to port it to iOS later so I'm going to st stick with this width and height now um, finally let me say if I what happened if I would like to have a white background in order to do so all you need to do is to change RGB to uh, or 256 or in the uh, uh, if you want to type in uh, this in the uh, hasid decimal you just uh, put in zero, 0 x and ff that means 256 that will that should give us a white background instead of a uh, black one so here we go now um before we go, let's see that we we have a lot of logging message, right? But now in this window, we don't see any logging from our engine, because uh, our logging is debug, and usually, uh, and by default, the logging level is info, and that's the reason why our debug message is not showing up here. In order to enable the logging message, I'm going to set the log message to. Uh, SDL locked and priority to be debug and after we do so then we are going to see all the uh, debugging message here right let's go to and look at the debug message you can see that we have we say that we initialized our SDL and in image TTF and we open our audio um, uh, audio and then you can see that we find two music decoder one is for CMD and one is for wave and then for the audio or the chunk there were um, three of them there were wave AIFF and VOC and that are the um, supported supported audio format and then there were also the play window and also the um, renderer. You can also see that the width and the height of our window is the same as the configuration because in Mac OS that's usually the fact but in iOS that is not usually not true. Now um, you can see that we can support more actually more uh, oops, mixer flag support more audio uh, audio format by setting this one to be say mix init say I, ca I can support the o OGG format and also the uh, mp3 format mp3 format here and for the image we can say well I'm going to support the oops, image init and we're going to support the PNG format and if we want it so we're going to support now some more format if you look at the debug message you can see that now we have more uh, format supported you can see here that we have uh, five music decoders now In including the old one CMD and WAVE and now there's a new one called OGG and MPG123 and MP3 that are the formats possibly we need later on and we also support the um, PNG files now and that's how we are going to use the um, engine that 
is pretty much for this tuto uh, this episode of the tutorial. And next time we're going to look at this event loop and try to abstract this one into something called screen. So we're going to manage our um we're going to manage our event using something called screen.